showcase the future of infrastructure through our model. Here we have Maclift Train, the electromagnetic train, and the smart bridge. Now, my friend will explain that. So, the components we have used for this electromagnetic train is a AA volt battery and a neodymium magnets and a copper, coil, a copper wire coiled around so that the magnet which will produce a, a I mean the battery which will produce a current and the neodymium magnets will produce a magnetic force which if they interact together they form the Lorentz force and uh, the electro the principle of electromagnetism it helps the train which is the battery to move forward in this world then, uh, this is just a display model because uh, the Mm, items are not fully available, so we have just used a display model. Efficient, it, le uh, it needs less maintenance and it consumes low uh, energy. And moreover, you do smart here? Uh, he'll be explaining about that. Well, I'll be explaining on this. And it also is uh, more efficient and time saving and due to absence of friction uh, it provides smooth rise and uh, less noise pollution. So, so, so my name is Tana. I'll be explaining on the smart bridge. Say for example if like in the rural areas the bridges due to flood and over rain they submerge or damage the bridge. So because of that we have made the smart solution known as the smart bridge which automatically detects the water level and increases the bridge level to make it efficient for the cars and trucks to travel without fearing or safety. So we have used an Arduino board, we have used two soil moisture sensors, there are motors and this is a soil moisture sensor which will detect the water level and when the water is So when the water level is detected, the bridge will increase itself and making it easy for the cars to go and making it safety. And when the bridge level uh, and when the water level gets down, the bridge will automatically decrease to its normal level. So why it, uh, this is more efficient and easy and safety and not fearing for us like if we knew that like say for example the recent inc incident that happened in Dimabu, the bridge so it is efficient and will not be feared to travel by car like thinking that the bridge is damaged so we can't go so it's like a very smart and easy solution and it is controlled through an um, Arduino board and the coding is done through this uh, mobile app all about so rather than making the bridge smart to active equipment, why can't we make a floating bridge? No, it's that is more uh, energy efficient also. Yeah, but floating bridge, but sometimes the floating bridge this works as well. So this the, this won't happen. The thing would won't happen because of this we have used the smart bridge. Mm -hmm. This possibility, like right? even there will be procedure now to this active equipment may also not function. Attachment we will check time to time. So based on that we'll make yeah. nice idea. This stage speaks of the boundless curiosity, relentless hard work, and incredibly creativity of our students. You are about to witness the fruits of their dedication, a vibrant display of innovative projects that bridge the fascinating world of science and art. This exhibition is a celebration of learning, a platform for our young minds to explore, experiment, and express their unique talents. It is a powerful reminder that with passion and perseverance, every challenge can be transformed into an opportunity for discovery. To our dear students, you have truly outdone yourself your enthusiasm and collaborative spirit are an inspiration to us all.
This prestigious event, which brings together students, educators, esteemed dignitaries, parents, and alumni, serves as an serves as an exemplary platform on the meaningful dialogue and exploration on the theme of bridging science and society. It aspires to illuminate the essential role of science in addressing the societal challenges while fostering a culture of innovation, collaboration, and shared progress. Science is far more than an academic subject or something that is related to laboratories. It is a dynamic living force that touches everyone. When science is shared openly and accessibly, it helps society to move forward together while addressing our collective needs and building up a better future. Likewise, society's real world challenges inspire scientists to ask all new questions and search for new solutions. This ongoing dialogue is crucial to saving global problems, improving human well-being, and achieving sustainable development. The history shows us that society has often changed the shape of science. For example, the rising demand of clean energy has driven innovation in solar and wind power. This demonstrates that science does not simply instruct a society. It collaborates with it, improving human well-being, creating a powerful mutual relationship that turns challenges into opportunities. Echoes of discovery. How science shaped our past. Scientific revolutions have repeatedly changed how we live and think. Some striking examples are number one, the printing press, created in 1440 by Gutenberg. Gutenberg's invention was revolutionary, allowing books to be mass produced and knowledge to spread quickly and widely. This innovation drastically increased literacy rates, standardized texts, and laid the foundation for the modern publishing industry. By reducing errors and making information accessible, it sparked the scientific revolution and enlightenment, challenging traditional ideas and empowering people to cushion, think, and innovate. Number two, electricity. Electricity transformed daily life by providing safer and more reliable lighting and replacing danger fire-based systems. It expanded work and leisure hours, improved household tasks through appliances, and even supported women's entry into the workforce. Education has now become the backbone of human infrastructure. From transport to communication, and continues to evolve through renewable energy and smart technologies. Number three, antibiotics. The discovery of antibiotics turned fatal infections into curable conditions, saving countless lives and expanding human life globally. However, overuse and misuse of these antibiotics has led to antibiotic resistance creating new challenges with new infections that are way more harder to treat. And we all said that think globally, act locally. So all our education towards science, our arts, our exhibition, our research orientation has to try to find out the solution which are spread out locally. For example, the problem was a problem of scarcity of water in, in Kohima. We all face a very long dry season in Kohima, where I expect that the science exhibition must uh, have some models how to preserve rainwater, how to clean rainwater, how to save more water in, in our uh, daily household activities. So all our studies, all our learning has to have a context and that context should be a local context where we can try to find out the solution of the local problems. Thirdly, I mentioned earlier that when I was in the school, I used to hate the long lectures and speeches. In my perception, the teaching and learning should be a 
joyful activity and that is where the exhibition comes into the picture we used to hate the we you we don't like the teachers who could not arouse interest in their subject among the students community so i believe all the the teacher community in don bosco in particular or all the schools across the nagaland state be it private or be it a government school they try to arouse the interest in the subject and that is why we can improve the learning outcome the science exhibition it is a learning by doing where whatever we get whatever lesson we get in the textbook whatever our learning from the textbook we try to implement we try to think beyond the box and try to present a model which can be solution or at least try to present a solution to the problems we are facing so i am sure the art and science exhibition in don bosco school must have been in the guidance of the the able teachers and school authorities have been guided to find out the solution to the solution which are available in local context so once again uh, i would like to extend my sincere thanks to all of you and uh, i believe that uh, the science and art exhibition shall be fruitful and shall arouse the interest in the subject in last three months what i have got an impression in the directory that majority of the our school students after passing uh, 10th they automatically go for the art subjects you must go for art subject if you are in love with the art subject if you are find this interesting you should go with the art subject you should try to find your own way but no you should not go for go for the higher studies only for the sake of degrees you must think what is your interest and which kind of studies can uh, can have multiplier effect on your interest subjects i would also like to encourage the student community and the parents also to encourage the students for go for more and more science studies because it is the science which are uh, more have more importance over our lives and once after a complete completion of schooling that is 10 plus 2 then we should go as per our own interest someone would like to go for commerce someone would like to go for journalism someone would like to seek a career in uh, it sector someone would like to see this uh, interest in the medical sector there are n numbers of uh, career opportunities available uh, outside the school and you must explore the all those opportunities as per your interest as per your inner calling inner calling is most important here because ultimately none of the career is bad it just depend on where you want to excel so since you are still in school you still have time once you leave the school it will be a cruel world so i am not uh, being very pessimistic but i just want to encourage you that till the time you are in the school you are still still a children you have to find out your inner calling you have to find out your own uh, interest someone would like to go for arts maybe uh, fine arts maybe Sculpture. Someone would like to go for the music also. So this all career are equally important, equally respectable also. Just that you have to find your inner call. So uh, once again, I would like to uh, insist that whatever we are learning in the classroom, whatever we are uh, learning through the textbook, has to have a practical aspect, has to have a local context. and i'm sure that the science exhibition shall further encourage to find out the solution of the local problems so with this uh, short speech i would like to convey my uh, 
best of luck to all of you and uh, i wish all of you that you will achieve your uh, all your dreams in your uh, future endeavors thanks all of you